Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is August the 12th today and we're looking at Psalm 101 and 102. The first psalm is small, just eight verses, and it's what I call David's promise. It's a psalm of David. Let's, break, let's read it together. <clears throat> um, I will sing of mercy and judgment, unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. So David begins, David's theology, David's spiritual life is grounded in music. But it's not just music, it is the songs of the music which are important. And in this particular psalm, he's giving his sort of, his philosophy of life. He's describing how he's going to live in the old covenant before Jehovah, the Lord, his God. He begins, I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O oh, when wilt thou come unto me, I will walk within thy house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes, I hate the work of them that turn aside, it shall not cleave to me. A froward heart shall depart from me, I will not, I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privily slandereth his neighbour, him I will cut off. Him that has a high look and a proud heart, I will not suffer. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Now this is what you would call um, a true theocracy. David, he has the Lord in his heart and uh, he's going to rule in his kingdom in such a way that those that tell lies will be cut off. Those that are proud will not be allowed to come into his presence. Those that, those that um, work deceit will not dwell in his house. He says, I will not even know a wicked person. All the people that I know will be upright in heart. What a great ambition to have. And I would say that this is probably not just an ambition, a stated ambition, but it no doubt was his policy and was something which he pretty well brought into action. Oh, that our politicians today might be able to say something like this. You know, mine eyes shall look upon the faithful of the land that he may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. You know, these are amazing sentiments from a king, a king of Israel. And uh, it's about how he will manage and how he will rule and judge the people. Now, Psalm 102 is what I call a sufferer's prayer. In fact, the psalm does have a title. Uh, the title is A Prayer of the Afflicted When He is Overwhelmed and Poureth Out His Complaint Before the Lord. Let's read it together. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as a hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican in the wilderness. I am like an owl in the desert. I watch 
and I am a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Mine enemies reproach me all the day, and they that are mad against me are sworn against me. For I have eaten ashes like bread, and mingled my drink with weeping, because of my indignation, because of thine indignation and thy wrath, thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. <clears throat> my days are like a shadow that declineth, I am withered like grass, but thou, O Lord, shalt endure for ever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt rise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favour her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones, and favour the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. So David is looking forward, he's looking forward amazingly to the messianic kingdom. He's looking forward to that time when all the heathen and all the kings of the earth will fear the Lord's name and they will be afraid of, of the glory of the Lord. He says, then the Lord will build upon Zion. He shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. I like the fact that when the messianic kingdom is described, <clears throat> it's not just described in terms of politics. It's described in terms of what God will do for those that are destitute for those that are poor, for those that are oppressed and downtrodden. I like that. You see, the character of the kingdom that the Lord Jesus will establish is those is the effect that it will have upon those that are poor in spirit, those that are meek, those that mourn for righteousness, those that long for the Lord, those that are the oppressed. If we go to the Sermon on the Mount and have a look at the Beatitudes, you will see the character and the feature of all those people that are going to be blessed. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> now let me read to you um, verse 18 to 22. 18 to 22 is my password today, a long password. This shall be written for the generation to come and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. So David has no, uh, sorry, the writer of the psalm has no illusions. This is about the future. This is about the future. Verse 19, for he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth. What to do? To hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem when the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. You see that? God is going to gather all of the kingdoms of the world and their purpose is only going to be one thing, that they might serve the Lord. That's the purpose. And the Lord looks down from heaven. He looks down to hear the groaning of the prisoner and to loose those that are appointed to death. You see, those on death row and those that are incarcerated, no doubt for their faith. He looks down from heaven and he will declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. And when the people are gathered together and all the kingdoms to serve the Lord, he weakeneth my strength in the way. He shortened my days. I said, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of all thou hast laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment, as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, 
thy years shall have no end. The children of thy servants shall continue, and their seed shall be established before thee. So he's looking forward, you see. He says, the children of thy servants will continue, and their seed will be established before thee. What a wonderful thing. Even though, even though the whole of the universe will get old and worn out and the Lord will wrap them up like a garment and he will change them and they will be changed. But the Lord is the same. Thou art the same and thy years shall have no end. Wow, isn't this an amazing thing? It changes our perspective about the world in which we live and about the future that we expect to see. Well, God bless you. It's wonderful to speak to you each day and look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Bye for now.